Going on everyone, Tommy from Pizarro's Pieces. 2018 was a huge year for me. I've got engaged, I moved house, and I also changed my job. But in between all that chaos, I was still adding items to my collection. In this video, we're gonna look at the top 10 additions of mine to the collection in 2018. Welcome back guys, 2018 was a huge year for me in not just the world of toys but as mentioned I also got engaged, I moved house, I changed jobs, that's a lot to happen in 12 months but it didn't stop me from doing other things I enjoy like adding to my collection. So I decided to do something a bit different, I'm going to wind down from 10 to 1 with my most enjoyable, most, I guess, um, important, some of them are important, <laughs> finds and additions to my collection from the year 2018. So we're going to start with number 10, Transformers. So guys, I've always said it, Transformers growing up for me as a youngster in the 80s was a big thing for me, a big cartoon for me, I really, really enjoyed it, but I've never really been into collecting the G1 toys, there's a hell of a lot of them, kind of like G.I. Joe and Star Wars, it can sort of be never ending, but for the nostalgic point of view, I wanted to get some Transformers figures in my collection, and I did so within the space of about six months. I acquired Soundwave, Optimus Prime, Megatron, and all the Dinobots, as you can see in the pictures. Now these are obviously all the modern versions, all reasonably priced, uh, sort of between, I think around 15 pound up to sort of 30 pound. I didn't want to start paying silly money because although this was a quite a fun part of the collection to, to add to, um, I wasn't looking to sort of pay out hundreds and hundreds of pounds on these figures. These figures are quite basic. I know some people say the plastic's quite flimsy on them. I like them. They remind me of the G1 80s cartoon. And they were quite a fun addition. I mean, I'm not going to go out and start buying hundreds of Transformers now. This is pretty much it. What you see here in the pictures is, is probably as far as it goes. So that's number 10. Number 9, the Brain Gremlin from NECA. This is not the normal small version, this is the 12 inch version of the Brain Gremlin from NECA. Uh, I wanted this in my collection for years but I never thought I'd really pick it up unless I could get it at a reasonable price. Reasonable price. I'd seen it at shows for you know, 90, 100, 100 plus, plus pounds and I managed to pick this up on an internet site, not eBay. But I managed to pick up on an internet site for around £50. It's in this package. It was a little bit dusty. And I went and got it collected from Brighton. So I was over the moon with that. Well happy to add that to my collection. It's a really, really good figure. And where I was looking to complete the NECA series of Gremlins, this sort of added to that. Awesome figure. And a great addition to the collection in 2018. Number 8. The WWE Elite Tag Team of Legion of Doom. Now I've been looking at these guys all on the internet for quite a few months, even probably eight, up to 18 months. I see them in Chicago in 2017 and I passed on them. I wish I'd got them then. They were quite a good price. I managed to pick these up on eBay. They cost me quite a bit. I think I paid £70 for the pair posted, which a lot of WWE collectors think is a really, really good price. I opened them. They've gone on display. They're probably, in regards to WWE Elite figures, Apart from Demolition, I would probably class these as WWE Elite Grail figures, if you want to call them Grails. It's not really Grail figures, but for me, and in regards to where my WWE collection and focus were going, these were certainly looked at for me as Grail figures that I've never really thought I might get for a few years. And I ended up pulling the trigger on them uh, about three or four months ago. The annoying thing was is that when I was at NEC, at Christmas in December, someone was selling them loose and they were both complete and they were for £40 for the pair. But that's what happens at the end of the day. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. To be honest with you, mine were unopened, so I can't ask for much more. 
And uh, again, like I said, a great addition to the WWE Elite section of this room. There are still a few more I want, but we'll see what 2019 brings. Number seven, the Phantom Gremlin from NECA. Now guys, as you know, the focus, the Gremlins, the NECA focus, it's been big the sort of last two, three years. As mentioned a few minutes ago with the, the 12 inch brain figure, the Phantom was one of the last ones I needed to, to get to a point with the NECA figures where I had them all. Now I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not really a completist when it comes to action figures and toys and collecting, but with the NECAs, Gremlins, I had to, I just, they were even the, the weird ones that were never in the films, I had to get all of them. The Phantom Gremlin, I managed to pick up at London Comic Con. It wasn't cheap, I paid, I think I paid £80 for it, which was, it or still is, should I say, the going rate on, on the internet, online. I was happy to pay it, and what more so the reason why is because it was in the flesh. I find buying things on eBay and that, it kind of takes the fun out of it. It takes the fun out of the hunt and what you're looking for. And it's very easy to obtain things on eBay where you go finding things in the wild as such. It's, it's more fun. So I was really happy to add this to the collection and to find it at London Comic Con. I was over the moon, as you can see in the picture. Number six, the Super 7 Filmation Classic version of Hordak. Now I acquired this several months back via one of the Facebook groups. It was brand new uh, of a guy I know who I've become to know called Paul. I got this at a really good price. It was cheaper than it what it was going on the internet. I think these have shot up in price again. I don't know, He-Man, Masters of the Universe figures, new and old uh, price-wise are just all over the place at the minute. They're just absolutely crazy, the prices on these. Really, really nice figure, very detailed. Massive, massive fan of Hordak. And I just had to have it. I already had a normal version of the He-Man Classic, uh, the Super 7 Classic. I've got a couple of versions of the original Hordak from the 80s. So it just made sense to add this to my collection at a good price. Great addition to the He-Man collection. Number five, the Masters of the Universe Bot Bag. Now I've mentioned this a few times in previous videos, guys. I picked this up from Smash Toys in Chicago back in October when I went. I got this at a really, really good price. Now, I haven't got it out of this box yet. I haven't blown it up. I certainly haven't checked to see if there's any sort of holes or anything in it. It's there, it's in the box. I paid $40 for this. It's a really, really good price. I've mentioned before I've had offers of over £100 for it. It was a great addition, especially as 2018, in regards to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe collection, my collection, I didn't really buy too much He-Man in 2018, very, very little. So to find this, to find a bit of merchandise that I didn't have that was within my price budget was awesome. And to find it in another country, even better. Great addition to the collection. I'm happy with this and it makes number five in the top 10. Number four, Visionaries. Now, I never had any intentions at all over the last few years really to collect Visionaries. I liked the cartoon, it was very short-lived. And I decided this year that I was going to sort of get a couple of them. I just wanted to sort of get Leoric and Darkstorm. I didn't want to go silly and start getting all all the Visionaries, all the Spectral Knights and all the, all the Darkling Lords. It, it meant a new collection, a new focus, and I didn't really want that. I was happy to add these two to my collection. So Leoric, weirdly enough, I managed to pick the figure up at a boot sale. Uh, he came with his helmet. I got his staff off one of my friends and then I got the whip off another guy I know through Instagram. So I kind of put Leoric all together myself. Darkstorm I bought as a complete figure from John from Jamorian Toys uh, a bit later in the year. So I was happy to add these two to the collection. They now sit on the Transformers shelf in my toy room. Another nice nostalgic element to Pizarro's Pieces toy room. They make number four. Number three, the Marvel Legends Builder Figure Venom Monster. Now this list wouldn't have been complete without some sort of Venom in it. I've acquired quite a few Venom figures this year, including the new select figure from Disney. I also picked up the Talking Venom, which also came from the Disney store. I've got a Venom latex mask. I've got several Carnage figures this year, but I think the pick of the bunch has to be the Venom wave, the Marvel Legends wave, the Builder figure, Monster Venom. 
it's absolutely awesome the figure weighs so much it's big it's detailed it's just a really really great version of venom also i wasn't keen on buying all the characters from that wave i kind of had to to get the builder figure parts i decided to keep a couple of them obviously i kept venom carnage i kept scream um i think the other ones might be in that wave might be poison that i kept but I think there was a couple of others I didn't bother keeping. I've ended up selling. But Builder Figures, with regards to Builder Figures, the only other one I've got is Man Thing. But this Venom, really, really nice. Really great addition to the Venom collection, which is ever-growing, especially seeing as the film came out several months ago. So the Venom Builder Figure Monster, Venom Monster, should I say, from Marvel Legends, makes number three in the list. Number two, the Toys R Us NECA santa gizmo toys r us exclusive this was now i picked this up in chicago again in october i nearly walked past it i managed to pick it up for 28 dollars and this was the reason this is made number two in my list is because this was the very last necker figure from the gremlins collection that i needed so obviously the phantom was in my list and the inch brain gremlin was in my list but this makes number two because it was it was the last one and to find it again in another country it's just the, the feeling sometimes to just find that one that you've been looking for. So you ain't having, having to get it off eBay or the internet. It's just such a great feeling. It's not my favourite NECA figure by far. It's definitely not my favourite. But in regards to importance of my collection, that is why it's number two in the list. So the Toys R Us NECA exclusive of the Santa Gizmo is number two in my top ten toys of 2018. Now we're down to number one, guys. So this is number one of my top 10 finds, toy finds, merchandise. It's not all just toys, but overall additions to my collection of 2018. And number one is the X Plus Ray Harryhausen figures. So I only found out about these I heard about these toys about four, three, four months ago. I managed to pick my first three up um, at a Comic Con local to me for 25 pounds, which at that point I didn't realize how much these figures went for. I then and then I added additional ones when I went to Chicago and then I managed to finish off my collection with the Minuton and the Cyclops. Obviously I've ended up having to get them off eBay. So there was eight figures in total and I ended up getting all eight figures within the space of about four months. But you know what guys, these figures are just, just unreal. They just take me back to, to them great films from the 50s, 60s and 70s, the Sinbad films, the Ray Harryhausen films, the, you know, the... Jason and the Argonauts and Sinbad and the Eye and the Eye of the Tiger and Sinbad and the Seventh Voyage. The, the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, shall I say? They were just great films. I remember them growing up as a kid, and I know my dad was a big fan of them films as well. And I just love these. I just love monsters and Greek mythology and and these figures are really nice. They're not very articulated or anything, and they're not particularly very colourful. They're they're quite in in regards to colour. Um, a couple of them are very very dark, as you can see in the pictures. But they were a great addition to the collection. I was over the moon to, to complete the collection by the end of 2018 because then in 2019, I can start focusing on other things because otherwise it be, may become a little... Because I was always going to get all eight. So there was no, I'll get three and that's it, or I'll get five. I wanted all eight. All eight figures are great figures. And uh, I, I probably think the favourite one of mine probably might be the Dragon... Um, I like Talos as well, very, very good. And just looking at them sort of bring back memories from from when I was young and when I used to watch them and when they used to come on on a Sunday afternoon uh, when I was very, very young, to be honest with you. So that is my number one choice for my addition of uh, my additions to my collection in 2018 that is my top 10 i thought guys i would share that with you i thought i would do something different a different video and i know 2018 has passed now and you know we're, we're well into 2019 we're a few weeks in but i thought it'd be good to just share with you guys uh, some of the things that my, my top 10 shall i say obviously i picked up loads of things in in 2018 but i just wanted to do a top 10 and like I say, these were more on the factor of fun, on the factor of importance in regards to my collection and in regards to um, just, just, well, just everything. Uh, what, what they were, what they, like you say, three of my top 10 items were gremlins and 
Gremlin, a Gremlin something was always going to make it. But I, I bought so much Gremlin stuff in 2018. But the Necker figures, I don't know. There's just something about them Gremlin Necker figures. I just, I think they're so good. I think they're great. And I think, like I say, the importance of finding the Toys R Us exclusive Santa Gizmo for me, in regards to completing the collection, it was just like. It was kind of like a weight off your shoulders a little bit because you're looking, you're searching for that last character, you're searching. And the problem is, the longer the months go on and even years go on before you acquire this figure, they become more and more scarce. And I, my Necker Gremlins collection is a collection that I keep in box. I do not open them. Um, they're not on cards. The Necker, the Necker Gremlins are not on cards. They're in sort of plastic uh, cases, not, not mint on cards, so they can't be ripped off or anything. But I like having them in their boxes and it's going to get harder and harder to find anything so obviously some people like them open so people will buy them and they will tear them open and then if they decide to sell it in three or four years you're going to find a lot of these figures being sold loose and that's not what i wanted i wanted one in a box and to find one and nearly walk past it at the chicago toy show was unreal but the ray harry house and figures they're just there's something else everything that i mentioned there, there's a few other little things that didn't quite make the top 10 my missus bought me a he-man watch um for my birthday funny enough which was back in september um the he-man stuff s stands out a little bit more than some of the other stuff because i got so little masters of the universe in 2018 compared to 2017 2016 and 2015 the three previous years he-man this year was was minimal, very minimal. I got the Filmation Classic Hordak, like mentioned in my top 10, the bot bag that was mentioned in my top 10, the watch that I just mentioned about that my missus got me. I can't really think of too many other bits and pieces. Oh, I got a cassette. I remember I put, picked up a cassette off Empire Toys. And of course, I've got the new Hordak from Super 7, which is on the classic card that was in my last video. But apart from that, guys, I have barely added anything at all to the He-Man collection. So the He-Man stuff does sound that I am still, listen, He-Man is a massive, massive thing. Masters of the Universe is a big thing for me with regards to my collection. I know I've pulled a few little bits and pieces out here and there and sold them. A lot of people have asked questions as to, you know, are you selling your He-Man collection? Why did you sell Why did you sell your carded Buzzsaw Hordak? Why did you sell, you know what guys, why did you sell your Scare Glow? Because I had them, they were in my collection, I had them in my collection, I, I had my time with them. And certain things I just look at and I think, do I really need that anymore? Do I really want that anymore? I had one carded He-Man figure and it was Buzzsaw Hordak and I just thought, I don't really want this in my collection no more. I don't really collect the figures. I collect more on the merchandise side. But He-Man is just so, I can't buy it. I mean, the prices are just phenomenal. So obviously the He-Man bits, uh, some of them bits made it into my top 10. Like I said, guys, I picked up quite a few Carnage figures, several carded Carnage, Carnage figures from the Toy Biz range that they didn't make it into my top 10, but everything is, is, is as important as the next for me in regards to what I bought and what's in my collection. There's a few things I bought in 2018 that I think, why did I buy that for? And they're all around the room, bits and pieces, and I look at it and I think, oh... There were, no Godzilla items really made it to the top 10 because I didn't really buy too much Godzilla. I don't think I bought barely any Godzilla to be honest with you. I'm just looking. I don't think I really bought any Godzilla figures in 2018. I might have bought one NECA one, I can't remember. But no Godzilla made it into the top 10 unfortunately. But like I said guys, it, they're all important. The whole, this whole room of plastic is, is all important. But I thought I would share with you guys my top 10 finds presents everything of 2018 they were my top 10 so guys if you are watching this video and you ain't subscribed please consider to do so 2019 Pizarro pieces i'm hoping for big things i'm hoping to be putting out loads more videos for you guys and if you are watching this and you're on social media don't forget to like the facebook page follow on instagram follow on twitter the free links are below check out the website pizarrospieces.com and guys, thanks for watching and until the next video, I'll see you all then.